Imported from Japan a long time ago, Japanese barberry was used for landscaping around homes and buildings for years. Plant nurseries like this shrub because it's very hardy, drought tolerant, and deer don't like it. And its dense woody branches can sport dark green, yellow, or purple leaves, as well as lots of thorns, and pretty red berries in the fall. But Japanese barberry is a dangerous plant. The Northwest Michigan Invasive Species Network says this is one of the nastiest invasive plants in our region. In the wild, barberry is a real menace to natural habitats and human health because it forms dense thickets that offer a perfect setting for mice and ticks that carry Lyme disease. Emily Cook is a project manager for the Invasive Species Network housed at the Grand Traverse Conservation District. The main issue with this plant is that it's still sold as an ornamental, so people are still planting it. Um, and from there, it's moving on to these areas we really care about. Um, it grows into the forest. It's got a lot of seeds that birds love. They eat it, and then it, they drop those seeds, and it can grow anywhere. It's extremely shade tolerant, so it's going to show up in our forests, um, suppressing any of those really good tree seedlings that are coming up to encourage forest regeneration. Any of those spring ephemerals, trillium, you won't see that in an area that's infested with this Japanese barberry. Apparently, there are lots of infestations of Japanese barberry in northern Michigan, and once it takes hold, it can be hard to get rid of. Onekama resident, Lenise Hensel, helped to lead a barberry removal effort in her forested neighborhood just south of Portage Lake. So I could see that it was growing here, uh, around in my woods, and getting way out of control, and so I contacted the Invasive Species Network, and they said that they could probably help me. But they said I had to have the okay from all my neighbors first. So I contacted all my neighbors, explained to them with uh, handouts what is so bad about Japanese barberry, and had to convince them that it needed to be gone, and so I did convince them. The Invasive Species Network hosts work bees to help remove these pests, providing training and equipment and helping to coordinate volunteer labor. This is the second work bee at Hensel's neighborhood. The volunteers marched in to remove barberry remaining around neighborhood homes, then went to work on infestations in the nearby woods. There have been some studies done that show a link between the plant and uh, black-legged ticks, which hosts uh, Lyme disease, which obviously is something that we are concerned about. And then we're finding out that this plant kind of creates this perfect humid environment for those ticks. A specialist with the Invasive Species Network, Fields Ratliff, says barberry really can be controlled. You need good tick repellent on your clothes, heavy gloves, a shovel, some loppers, and just a little herbicide like Roundup for the big stems. If possible, he says, dig out the whole root ball. So you can see that this is the root ball and the majority of the roots came out so this plant will die. If you were just to cut it at the surface, the plant will return the, the following year. One thing that landowners can do when they, they're in their yard and they think, you know, they see these plants and maybe they've introduced themselves from a neighbor's property or perhaps they paid a landscaper to put in Japanese barberry but now they don't want it anymore. First step is removing that plant and then replacing it with an alternative. And there are so many amazing native or at least non-invasive alternatives they can put in their yard that aren't going to spread and also support the wildlife and those pollinators. And ISN, the Invasive Species Network, is hosting an event in May to actually encourage this and give you a little reward for doing so that you can bring your Japanese barberry plants from your yard to us and we will give you a coupon for a non-invasive alternative to a local nursery or landscaper. So we're, we're encouraging that replacement and getting those natives back in the land.